So that's just a little notice that you heard there to let you know that the session's being recorded so that the people who couldn't join us can watch it afterwards. Right, while we're waiting for people to log in, giving people a couple of moments, um, if you if you can, let us know where you're joining from in the world. We're always really interested to know where our attendees are. So just in the chat, let us know where you are at the moment. I'm in, um, I'm in Southeast London and it's a cold, but very nice day here. Uh, great, we've got some joining from India, fantastic. Uh, some from Bangladesh. Fantastic. Somebody else from India. Right. Well, this is this is very interesting. I, I, we, we thought that because we'd scheduled this at this time in the morning, we might we might be lucky enough to get some people from that part of the world. It's really great to know that uh, that you're able to join us. Um, and I understand that somebody uh, some of the recruitment team have been sharing this this event. So that's really great. Thank you for joining us. And I hope you're having a great day where you are. So now that we've got a few attendees joined, I'm just going to explain how the session works. So my name's Kim. Very warm welcome. Uh, Steffi is in the lab, as you can see, in central London in Bloomsbury. So uh, I'm just, in a moment, I'm going to hand over to Steffi to introduce herself and, and, the, and where, where she works and the lab itself. Um, if you have any technical problems, if anything isn't working, put it in the chat box. Um, myself, I'll, I'll be able to see it. Steffi can't see it on her phone, which is what she's joining from. But if there are any problems you can't hear or you can't see, let us know there. You can post questions throughout the session at any point using the Q&A, but we'll probably wait until the end and try and gather all the questions up together. So, um, without, so, so now that I think we've got plenty of people joined in and with us, I'm going to hand over to Steffi. Steffi, over to you. Yes, thank you, Kim. And good morning, everybody in India, Bangladesh and elsewhere in the world. Nice to, well, I can't see you, but nice that you're with us. So I'm, as Kim said, we are at UCL in the biochemical engineering department uh, on level, uh, level six. Uh, you can't see that, but um, I'm in the lab right now. Uh, so we have two big labs up here. Um, so I'm Steffi Frank. I'm a lecturer in synthetic biology here in the department. Um, so as a lecturer, I do teaching and I also do research and I have a research group and I'll show you a little bit about research in a minute. But perhaps first a few words about uh, teaching. So I teach um, on the undergraduate courses. So the first years um, come in, they have lectures, uh, introduction to biochemical engineering because that's what we do. So we have various programs on biochemical engineering and I teach them on synthetic biology. You might have heard about that. So this is when, we, uh, when we're trying to repurpose uh, some biological parts or we're making entirely new biological things like proteins and things like this. Um, so I teach that for the first year. So I got a bit of an introduction, which is always good. Um, and then I also teach to the third and fourth year, we talk about vaccines a lot. So, I mean, vaccines is a very timely topic right now. Um, so in the course, we learn about how to, you know, what are different types of vaccines and how we manufacture those. And then I also teach the post uh, uh, the postgraduate students. So our PhD students that are in the lab, you know, that come in in their first year and they I teach them on research skills, you know, how to <clears throat> use certain programs and tools, for instance, for synthetic biology, how you do cloning, you know, make plasmids and things like this. So that's kind of my teaching role. In terms of research, um, so I have a group of students, PhD students and postdocs, and some of those um, are in this lab here, and some of those are in other labs. But really what we are all interested in, I'll show you in a second, is to, I mean, my group is particularly interested in protein um, cages. So I've got a little model, it's like a 3D model of a protein cage. It looks a bit like a virus, you might think. They are about the size of a virus. They're very, very small, very small. Um, smaller than a bacteria cell and they're made of proteins and they are produced by bacteria so this is my little e coli friend <laughs> um, so bacteria produce those but uh, they are made in nature these in nature these kind of particles but what we are interested in is how can we uh, engineer them or repurpose them for biotechnological um, applications yeah so we're thinking about uh, because normally there are proteins in here that or also called enzymes that carry out a certain reaction and they make 
valuable products. So how can we use this uh, capsid, which is quite protective for those enzymes, and make some nice valuable compounds, you know, chemicals that are used in, you know, that are useful for, for industry applications. And we're also interested in those because they look a bit like viruses. How can we um, change those particles and attach something on the surface of those so they could act as a, you know, as a vaccine potentially. So that's, that's something we are working on and we're co collaborating um, with, you know, people in the vaccine field <clears throat> and others to kind of devise some of those things. Um, so I was going to, I mean, I can show you around the lab a little bit. Um, so let me give you a little tour um, after I told you what we're interested in. Um, hang on, so I'm just going to do, going to change my camera around. So just giving kind of uh, just a general view of the lab. So you can see this is quite a big lab here. So quite a lot of us are working in this lab. Um, there's another lab on the other side of the corridor, but I'm going to give you like a little tour. So if you come in with lots of freezers and freezers and fridges and uh, some kind of fancy equipment that, um, yeah, that we can use to look at our protein capsids that I've just shown you. Um, this is a big autoclave to sterilize uh, E. coli. So we work a lot with E. coli. This is our um, kind of workhorse. Um, uh, you can see here a, a microorganism cabinet. So this is used to keep our E. coli cultures that we grow sterile. And, and here you can actually see, I'm just going to open that, um, is an incubator. And you can see some culture here. You can see um, a bacillus culture. So this is another bacterium growing in here in some rich mediums. So kind of a nutrient medium that feeds the cells and it needs to be shaking. So it grows well and it's incubated at 37 degrees. So it grows very well. We have more shakings here. So these labs, just, uh, just coming around again. These labs are also used by our undergraduate students. Um, who do their final year project in here. Um, so they come in, they have a short project like every week. Um, they spend some time in the lab working on something that is very relevant to our you know, interests as a group and as a department. Um, for instance, we have two undergraduate project students this year um, doing some work on those particles that I've shown you. So, here they are again. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they, they spend time with us here and they can use the equipment and they get trained by, um, by my group and by others in the department. But um, uh, Kim also asked me to talk a bit about iGEM, which is uh, essentially a student team made out of undergraduate students. So iGEM stands for International Genetically Modified, uh, so, so Genetically Engineered Machines. It's essentially a competition um, that takes place every year and it's a worldwide competition, so an international competition where lots of teams uh, from, the, from everywhere in the world take part. Um, so yeah, Kim has just posted a link to iGEM, thank you so much. Essentially, we recruit students from our department, but also from other departments within UCL. So from different faculties, uh, because it's a really interdisciplinary project. So we have students that are biochemical engineers with us. We get students from computing, from maths, physics, um, sometimes social studies, because the projects are quite, um, you know, interdisciplinary in terms of they tackle a real world problem. You know, the students are working on something that really is affecting the world right now. Um, and we need, you know, people from all disciplines to tackle issues because there's always some ethical issues. There's always some computational, uh, uh, you know, uh, challenges or programming that is required. Plus people that need to go to the lab to build DNA um, to express uh, proteins and, you know, to create, um, to create um, biotherapeutics or whatever is needed. So to give you an example, um, 
we a couple of years ago we had a project where we actually engineered um, those particles that I've just shown you um, to put a molecule on the surface that can bind to breast cancer cells. So we were actually, the, the idea with the team was, the team actually came up with that idea themselves. You know, they, they're also very heavily involved in creating a project that is very important. So breast cancer is an important issue. And so we wanted to make a drug delivery particle. So they, they changed the, the surface of this particle and they managed to target this, these little capsids to breast cancer cells. And inside is a, is a drug that will be released at the point you know when the particle enters the breast cancer cell and it will kill the breast cancer cell specifically so that was the project and they had built these particles themselves in e coli so they they expressed them in e coli then we smashed the cells open so once e coli makes those little particles um actually i'll show you uh, let me just turn it around. Let me turn the camera around. So, so once you, uh, the E. coli actually doesn't look like, uh, it really does not look like this, right? It looks like uh, something like, I don't know if you can see that. This is a Petri dish with some agar uh, and you can see little colonies. Uh, hopefully you can see that on my camera. Do you see the yellow dots? Oh, there we go. Just about came into focus then. Oh, sorry. I'm just... How is that? Or oh, maybe putting it down here on a surface. Um, how is that? Oh, that, that's great. Yeah, we can see them all there. Great. So these are the colonies. So basically, the colonies are made of lots and lots and lots of E. coli bacteria. And they are producing the uh, capsids that I've just shown you. And then you can break the um the e coli open and i'm just trying to see <laughs> so this is uh, one of my students alex oh. just alex has just grown um the e coli in these flasks here essentially they're, they're not in there anymore he's just put them in a pot uh because he needs to collect them from the growth medium and I'm going to show you uh how we collect and so we have this big uh, centrifuge here where we're actually putting the pots inside and we collect the coli. So it's a, it's a very big rotor, big buckets that, um, that are used. Uh, you know, this is where we're putting the, the, um, the coli culture in and this is how we're collecting it. So, um, and then we break the cells open and we have machines for that and we can purify the proteins. And then we can do all sorts of analysis and we have several equipment here in the lab that is used for the analysis. So we have these kind of heat blocks to heat samples up. Um, we can run uh, these different DNA gels, but also protein gels. You can see this here, all these tanks. This is where we run the, the proteins and we analyze it. But, you know, we I showed you these little plates of the colonies. Um, you need to, sometimes collect individual colonies and it can take a long time. So we have a machine, so it's a, it's an auto, it can be automated uh, with this little colony picker machine here um, that has, uh, you might not see that uh, very easily, but it has a unit here that uh, where, where it you know, uh, drives around and you put your plate in the center here with all your little colonies and it drives around and picks individual colonies. And then you can grow these uh, E. coli or other bacterial cells. So this is um, very useful if you have to pick a lot of colonies. Um, and then, you know, we have this equipment here that is very helpful for cloning. So when we do these iGEM projects of our student team, uh, they mainly do their cloning by hand. But if we had something that would take a lot of, um, uh, you know, manual cloning, uh, lots of petting, then we would uh, be able to use this kind of automated system here. So they, they could come here and do that here. But last, I mean, two years ago, we did the cloning um, by hand. Um, yeah, and then last year, because we had the, uh, well, we had a pandemic and 
we couldn't go to the lab because everything was locked down. Um, but we, we still ran a iGEM team. And it was a very good year too, because um, I mean, it was very difficult for the students, but they, they called in online and we had all the meetings online. We did not meet them once uh, in, in real life, but we, <laughs> we, we met up every week and a few times a week and Alex and others in my lab helped. Um, and the students came up with an amazing project. They wanted to create a, uh, a fuel cell um, that is driven by plastic degradation. So they wanted to degrade plastic from the ocean, tackle the plastic issue, degrade the plastic and create uh, energy. And that energy in a fuel cell would be used to desalinate water. So to remove salt from water. And it was, I mean, a very challenging and very big idea, but um, they designed it all. Um, they even designed all their cloning. So they, if we had time to go to the lab, they would have been able to do that. We, uh, we, we actually started collaborating with another team in the UK, another iGEM team to do some cloning for us. Um, but the other parts of the team were doing um, you know, computational analysis and they were calculating if this desalination device would actually be able to work, you know, how much water could we desalinate with this and so on. So it was, I mean, it was an amazing project. They got lots of data. They also engaged because it was such an online year. They engaged with iGEM teams and um, collaborators around the world and talked to, uh, they talked to industry, they talked to desalination plants, they talked to plastic degradation companies. They, you know, they were just really active and uh, we, we won a gold medal. Our team won a gold medal and they did win a gold medal the year before. Uh, because they um, they go to these um, very very big competitions um, that were online over the last two years. Nevertheless, all the teams were there, all virtual. Um, lots of presentations, lots of company uh, attendance as well. And so you compete against two hundred fifty plus other teams, and uh, you can win either a gold, a silver, or bronze medal. And we got a gold medal last year and the year before, so we're really proud and very happy. And um, when we did our little uh, project with the drug delivery particle, we also got nominated for, I've got my certificate here, for the best uh, DNA part. So we had created um, a DNA part that was, yeah, was standing out to the judges, essentially, and we actually won um, another award for for another part so uh, yeah we're really quite happy about that um, so so this is how students can get involved in the actual you know research real research uh, projects and it can help us um, you know move forward and um, really develop our research and uh, work on some actual um, relevant projects um, so I don't know, it's, uh, Kim, are there any questions yet? Yeah, there's one question that's come in, which is asking if undergraduates can take part in any research during their course. And I think there's no limit on what people can do, but it's probably worth explaining how students go through the process. So what kind of um, student projects there are, how, they, how does someone choose what kind of research they want to do and, and, and what are the opportunities to do it? Yeah, so um, that's a good question. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, there are several options you can get involved. You can either, you can either um, apply for a summer studentship. So either something like iGEM, as I just explained, because that's essentially a summer studentship or a summer studentship within a academic, you know, within the department. So we have a number of, I mean, so we are quite a lot of academics that are research active in the department and they each have different focus. So some of us are working on cell and gene therapy and other, you know, other topics. But you can apply for the summer studentship and that normally allows you to work for six to eight weeks in the lab if you, you, know, if you are funded. Um, and then you can go to that supervisor's lab and you can work on a project that you either came up with yourself or that you have to vice together with that supervisor. And normally it's something to do with their research interests, you know, so you normally align with, with them. Um, then the other option is uh, 
that you volunteer, you know, you could ask one of the researchers if you can come to their lab from time to time and help out. Uh, maybe they have a little bit of funding to support you. Uh, you can look for internships in companies too. So quite a lot of companies offer those. And we do help occasionally, you know, when we see something being advertised, we definitely send it around to our students. And we do have as a department, a lot of industry, industry contacts. So we, uh, industry is quite heavily involved with our teaching. They come and they teach uh, our undergraduate students. They come and they judge undergraduates work as well. So if you have, uh, I don't know, presentations or posters for certain research projects or scenarios, quite often get also judged by industry delegates or, you know, uh, collaborators. And uh, so, so they could have an internship for you um, that you could take up. You basically apply for that. You just look out from first year onwards. You might be able to do it in your first year. Most people do something like an internship in their second year or some kind of summer studentship experience because uh, then they have settled in, you know, they know their ways around and they, they start working in the lab. Um, I should also say that if you are really keen on lab work, we have a, uh, a course in the second term of your first year, it's called biochemistry and molecular biology, where you do a lot of lab work. You have um, six practical sessions, they go half a day each, and you do a lot of, um, you know, what I talked about, the cloning, you work with, you know, bacteria, like uh, bacteria strains, uh, you do some DNA cloning, you do some protein purification, you're running gels, and you're writing up your data in a kind of in a report. So you do learn some very, very important fundamentals in the lab already in year one. And then you're doing a final year project. I've talked about that earlier, where you come to the lab uh, in your last year. And you know, you have quite a long project over several months working with a supervisor, a PhD supervisor on um, on, on on some project that interests you, you choose. Brilliant. Thank you, Steffi. Um, we've, I'm, I know so we're getting a bit close to the end of the times, but we've got two questions coming in. The first one, I'll, I'll just jump in on this one um, because uh, it's asking about employment opportunities, um, what, and whether pharma companies employ you directly as a graduate or whether they expect PhD. Um, these are, this is a really great question, but we've actually got a session happening in January with Dr. Chikinweke and someone from the engineering careers team. So if you have a look on the website or keep an eye on the emails that you're getting, come along to that and we can go through all the career opportunities that are open to you, uh, answer all your questions. You can eat, hopefully we'll have some alumni there that you can talk to about their career journeys. So that's, that's a whole dedicated session to careers. Um, and, and that that's we, we can we can go way into depth, which I can't do now, unfortunately. Um, so the other two questions that have come in. Now, there's, there's one about vaccines and, they, and it's a question about um, RNA. Again, this, this I mean, that's a brilliant question that's come in, but we're actually going to do a taster lecture in spring when we're going to go really deep into vaccines. So you will get some you, you'll get details about that. Come along to that. We'll get some from the Vax Hub. Uh, in our department and we can go we can go really deep dive into the subject and you can ask some questions and really find out a lot about vaccine manufacture and the different technologies involved so if it's okay i'm just going to give the last question to steffi which is for igem the research is, is is the research done as experimental research so as well as like the research issues touched on so um or things that haven't been researched yet i think it's probably worth saying as well as the lab research in igem there's also the things that are brought in and I want to confirm it is novel new research. So, Steffi, what what are the things as well as lab research? I, I've 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 seen yeah. some interesting stuff go on. Yeah. So, as well as lab research, um, so the team is normally composed of lab researchers that go to the lab and build, you know, the genetic constructs and and build the biological parts. But you also have parts of the team that I said, like I said earlier, they do some computational modeling. So they work out if what you, what you want to create and what you want to do actually makes sense and it's gonna, is likely to work. So these could be modeling, I don't know, they could be modeling some kind of protein structure or they could be modeling how your cells grow or in, in the example of the fuel cell and the desalination cell, how much could you actually know? Is it viable? Is your idea viable? Could that cell actually desalinate water or you know is it just a grand idea that's never going to work so you've got to have like a in, in, interdisciplinary team and everybody works on different aspects and then you have also don't forget you also have 
kind of a social aspect. You know, if you wanted to build desalination plants, would, you know, let's say near the coast or something, you fish out plastic from the ocean and then you degrade and then you desalinate water. Is that something people would actually accept, you know, near their, their home places or would they have some problem with this? And, you know, you've got, you've got to talk to people, you've got to talk to the public, make sure, you know, that the public does, is in the loop, they can contribute, not just understand, you don't want to just lecture people, but you want to really get them on board, see what they can contribute, and you've got to then design, you know, your idea around what's possible and, and uh, what do people want. So I hope that answers the question. Thank you. I mean, there's one that's come in, which is so good. Um, if you're okay, we're sorry, we, 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 we normally give 20 minutes, but these are such good questions. I think we'll go on a little bit further. If that's okay, Stephanie. Someone's asked about how this differs from biomedical energy. Biomedical is very much about the physics of, of medicine. So you get things like um, therapeutic diagnostics, so regular therapy, um, sort of devices uh, in the body. That's kind of what biomedical engineering is. We've got a great department at UCL and, and, and they'll, they'll talk to you about their work, which is very exciting. But if somebody is considering between neuroscience and biochemical engineering, um, again, Steffi, perhaps you'd like to explain what the difference between neuroscience and biochemical engineering is. Yes. So thank you for this question. So they're actually quite different things. I mean, you could get involved with a neuroscientist if you are a biochemical engineer on a collaboration. But essentially, as a bio biochemical engineer, you are looking at the fundamental research you know like neuroscience or the biochemistry or synthetic biology but you're you're kind of looking at an angle of how can i make um products uh you know how can i manufacture products how can i it's just, so it's the whole process from designing let's say a drug or a biotherapeutic protein let's say an antibody for corona or whatever or a vaccine then you do everything from designing that antibody or that vaccine to working out how can I actually make this? So what kind of bioreactor do I have to use? What scale do I make this? Is, uh, do I you know, use this, um, like I've shown you these little flasks where we grow the bacteria. Do I use a one liter flask or do I use a hundred liter fermenter? And we can try these things out because we have a pilot plant. So basically we can try a pilot study. We can go from the one liter, um, you know, let's say Alex found out here, yeah, my student, Alex found out, okay, we can make a lot of these capsules in the lab, but we need to also work out what, what, what can we actually make them on a larger scale? You know, is it feasible? Can we make them a hundred liter bioreactor and how much do we get out in the end? And so it's kind of the pilot scale is like the, the step between the lab and the industry. And then, you know, there's people that look into, oh, students will learn about the bioreactors. Uh, what's the bio, what does the bioreactor need to look like? How can I redesign it to get more product? Uh, how do I recover my product? So how do I get my product out of the cell? And how do I purify it? You know, do, what kind of centrifuge do I need to use or what kind of filtration system? So it's, it's more than just um, looking at the kind of scientific fundamental understanding of a molecule. It's how can I bring that molecule to the market? It and what kind of processes do I need to design for this? So this is what biochemical engineering is like. It's not just the engineering of the actual, um, you know, biological entity, but engineering of the bioreactors and the whole process. Whereas neuroscience is probably, uh, I mean, I don't know much about neuroscience, I'm sorry, but it's probably more on the medical and kind of biological understanding of molecules and, you know, um, um, and uh, concepts. I hope this answers the question. Thank you. That's really great, Steffi. Just to let you know, if, if that doesn't answer your question, by all means, do get in touch with me. My details are in the emails that you'll have had. Um, we do have some recordings of open days where uh, the admissions tutor for the department will go through the difference in chemical engineering and biochemical engineering, what's involved in biochemical engineering and the different degrees we have. So there is some of that. Um, and just go on our YouTube channel or our website and it'll, it'll explain everything. But if that doesn't do it, get in touch with me and keep an eye on the events that we're doing because we're going through all sorts of stuff that we do. But thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking the time to, to come and come and listen to our listen to us and judge. And the great questions, they were really, really good. Uh, I enjoyed answering them. And 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 Steffi, uh, thank you ever so much for joining us from the lab. Um, have a great time and I hope to see you all again soon. Thank okay. you very much. Oh, and by the way, the recording will be available afterwards if you missed any of this. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.